Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world, to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him, and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Well, our gospel reading this morning is from the very first chapter of the Gospel of John. We call it the prologue. If you're a novel reader, uh, you know that a prologue is something that sets up the scene for the whole book. And speaking of setting up the scene, I'm uh, preaching virtually in front of our stained glass window of the gospel writer, John. Uh, thought I might share some of the windows with you as we continue these video services so that you can see um, more of these gorgeous windows up close and personal. Uh, it's a little bit um, out of time loop, timeline. Anachronistic is the, the formal word, but uh, John here is holding a Bible some 1500 years before the development of the printing press, but you get the picture. Um, looking back at 2020, which I know some of you just don't want to do, I have to tell you one of the best things that ever happened to me is I had the opportunity to study the Gospel of John with a group of our members and some friends. And it could only happen this way um, because we were quarantined. Early, um, I think it was in April, April 1st, yes, we started the study of the Gospel of John and we went every weekday um, with very few exceptions. And we studied the Gospel of John for 40 sessions. That's how long it took us to get through this gospel. But it was fascinating. And I will ever be grateful to our Bible study companions who traveled through the Gospel of John um, during that time and stuck with a Bible study for 40 sessions. Um, it was a, a luxury that I've never before had, and I doubt that I'll ever have again, where people um, have the time and have the access to do a study like that. But enough of, of that. Um, one of the things we learned in that study is almost every chapter, as you read through the gospel, you come back to something you learned in the prologue. The prologue sets it all up. And these words um, of the prologue are so dense, um, so profound, so thick, that sometimes you have to read it over and over and over. It took me many years to learn to appreciate the prologue to John. And here's just a couple of the things that I appreciate about it. Um, you probably know this. But since this is the second Sunday after Christmas, um, this is John's Christmas story. You know, Luke has the baby. Matthew has the wise men, but really not much for the baby. Mark has nothing. Mark is pretty much all about the crucifixion, the passion. But in John, we find out that the word became flesh. And this is such a beautiful, beautiful statement. In the beginning was the word, okay? Capital W, anytime you see capital W, the word is not just words, but something bigger. The word was with God and the word was God. Okay, you see where this is going? He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it, and the word became flesh and lived among us. The word 
that was in the beginning with God and was God, with God. Of course, because Jesus is part of the Trinity, he's intertwined with God, is part of God. The word became flesh and lived among us. This is so important. You see, um, we have a whole Bible full of words. But the word, capital W, is how God decided to reveal God's self to the world. When God wanted to show humankind what God's personality would be like if God were a human. God sent us Jesus. And in the Gospel of John, we see a picture of Jesus. And many of those pictures are descriptive words. Um, Jesus uses the I am's in the Gospel of John. John is where you see the seven great I am's. I am the bread of life. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. But right here in the prologue, John sets us up with three of the great I am's that Jesus is going to describe about himself later. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. You remember later, Jesus says, I am the life. And the light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. The prologue is setting us up for these things. Life. Jesus is life. Jesus is light. And then further down. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Grace those undeserved gifts that God gives us just because God is God and God loves the world and truth. You remember Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Truth, I think is such a hard word for us these days because maybe the world has always been this way, but in my recollection, our country hasn't been as divided. I think now, you know, you could say aliens are coming, they've landed already. And depending on who you hear that from, half the country will say yes, half the country will say that's malarkey. Because we don't seem to be able to agree on anything. And we don't trust people to tell us the truth. Certainly not the people from news sources we don't trust or people on the opposite side of the political fence. But here's the deal. We like to argue in facts, okay? And facts can often be manipulated, right? Um, Anybody who's worked with data knows that you have to be very careful with data, that you use scientific proofs to ensure that your data is not skewed You know, if we're having a sunny day, well, there's no global warming. You know, so truth 
can be truth even in a moment. I'm sorry, facts are small. Facts can be facts in a moment, but they are not universal truths. Does that make sense? Facts can be facts in a moment, but not be universal truths. I want you to understand that difference because it's important. If the sun shines for an hour and it rains the rest of the day, was it a sunny day or a rainy day? That's just an example. Okay, don't think too hard about that. But here's the deal. Jesus said, I am the truth. God chose to give us Jesus, to be the truth and to show us the truth. If you haven't done so for a while, read the Gospel of John, because there are a lot of things in the Bible that you can find, that you can quote. They may be factually from the Bible. But do they represent the truth of Jesus? Jesus, who is the bread of life, he fills us, he nourishes us. Jesus, the way, you know, that's, that comes from when Thomas said, we don't know the way. You know, Jesus said, you're, you're going to come after me. And G Thomas says, I don't know the way. This is my favorite funeral text. Jesus says, I am the way. If you know me, you already know the way. Okay? I'm the light of the world. The light. Remember all those Christmas Eves where we take one little light and we share it with other people with lights and then we lift it up high and the whole church is lit up. We all have a spark of that light of Christ in us, the light of Christ. And we can shine for the world. Jesus is the good shepherd, the one that chases down and, and recovers, retrieves, the lost and the wounded, the true vine, the vine that gives fruit, nourishment, sustenance. The truth. This prologue tells us that Jesus is coming into the world would be met by unbelievers, by people who chose their own facts, even religious leaders in his own religious tradition. Jesus is the truth. And a couple of truths, deep truths that we find in the Gospel of John. One, from John chapter three, God so loved the world that he sent his only son. That so whoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. Two, Jesus made it very, very simple. Not simple, not easy, but simple. What does it take to please God? Love God, love neighbor. Not always easy, but there aren't a lot of complicated rules. Love God, love neighbor. That's a good New Year's resolution, right? Grace upon grace.
we, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Let me read that again. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Keep yourself close to Jesus as Jesus always keeps you close to him. I just want to finish with, with a sentence out of the reading from Ephesians that, that Pastor Vince just read. So that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory in him, Christ. You also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Grace upon grace be upon you. The truth of the word made flesh, God incarnate, Jesus Christ, be with you. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. 
Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness, that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor. Hold the ecosystems of this earth in delicate balance. From coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded, or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and weary. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You come to us in the beauty of darkness and of light. Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor your image in one another. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. With all the saints, give us our inheritance in Christ. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.